His name, few people remember. He used to be a cop, but now he's a private eye. He didn't choose this life. It chose him. He's seen the worst of humanity, and he's become a little jaded. But he's still got a code, and he'll do whatever it takes to get the job done. He spends his days in a dimly lit office, waiting for the phone to ring. It's not often that it does. When it does, it's usually someone in trouble, and he could never resist the urge to help, even if it means putting himself in harm's way. He's got a past that he's not proud of, but one that he can't escape. The whiskey helps, but only for a little while. He's not a hero, and he's not a villain. He's just a man trying to make a living in a city that doesn't care. More bills. When you're broke, overdue bills are only good for one thing. Glamorous widow suspected in murder of notorious crime boss. The city was stunned as news of the brutal murder of notorious crime boss, Tony the Shark Marlowe, spread like wildfire. The police were called to the scene of the crime, a luxurious penthouse apartment overlooking the city, where they found Marlowe, 57, dead from multiple gunshot wounds. The initial investigation pointed to Tony's glamorous and enigmatic wife, Levita Marlowe, as the prime suspect. Detectives were quick to note that Mrs. Marlowe was nowhere to be found and had not been seen or heard from since the night of the murder. Sources close to the police department say that Mrs. Marlowe, known for her extravagant lifestyle and love for the finer things, had been spotted in the company of several shady characters in the days leading up to the murder. Eyewitnesses reported hearing raised voices and the sound of gunfire coming from the couple's apartment on the night of the murder. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, detectives believe that Mrs. Marlowe had motive and opportunity to carry out the killing. She was reportedly unhappy in her marriage and had been seeking a way out of her life with Tony for some time. The city is in shock as they come to terms with the fact that one of the most powerful men in the underworld was taken out by the woman he loved. The search for Mrs. Marlowe continues, and the police are urging anyone with information to come forward. Say, that looks like the dame from the paper. Well, well, if it isn't the city's most wanted, what do you want? Are you Pierre O'Malley, the private eye? That's what it said on all those bills. I'm Levita Marlowe and I need your help. My husband. Tony Marlowe has been murdered, but the police are after me. They think I did it. And you came to me why? I'm a washed up ex-cop, not exactly the first choice for the wife of a crime boss. I have no one else to turn to. I can pay you well, enough to get you back on top. If you help me track down the real killer. And what makes you think I can help you? I heard you were the best. That you could find answers where others couldn't. All right, I'll hear you out. What do you know about your husband's death? Mrs. Marlowe explains the details of the case, mentioning a meeting with Joe Johnson, a rival boss. A detective, Jack Donovan, is heading up the case. Tony's muscle and the maid were also there. All right, I'll take the case. But I'm warning you, it won't be easy, and I'm paid up front. Thank you. I knew I could count on you. Uh-huh. And where are you staying now? I can't say. I don't want to leave the police to me. I understand. But if I'm going to help you, I need to be able to get in contact. Write down a number where I can reach you, and I'll see what I can do to find the real killer.
I figured the cops would have been here by now. They're usually not far behind a dame in heels. Tony Marlowe called him the shark because he was vicious and took a bite of whatever he wanted. His death will create a dangerous power vacuum. That gives me somewhere to start. LaVita Marlowe, Tony's young and stunning wife, is found in her bedroom, visibly shaken. She claims to have been sleeping, but her extravagant lifestyle and recent arguments with Tony make her a prime suspect. Was it a desire for freedom or something more sinister? Well, 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 it isn't Detective Jack Donovan. And what brings you to my office, Detective? So you're a private eye now, Valley. Well, a buck is a buck, but you know how it is. Was there something you needed? You know why I'm here. I'm investigating the murders of Tony Marlowe. Well, I didn't kill him. You've come to the wrong place. Levita Marlowe was seen entering this building. She wasn't carrying her dry cleaning. I want to know where she is. Why? So you can rush her down to the jail and claim you closed the case? I'm just trying to do my job here, O'Malley. Right now, Mrs. Marlowe is a top suspect in the case. That may be true, Detective Donovan, but I'm working for Mrs. Marlowe now, and I don't intend to give her up to you. Fine, O'Malley. Mrs. Marlowe isn't the only suspect I have to track down. I have a couple of other leads. Well, you know what they say. The butler did it. But in this case... What? What do you know about Tesla Fluffy Bottom? And that would be... She's the Marlowe's maid. She's on the suspect list. Do you know something? No, I don't know anything. Who else you putting the pinch on? Well, I'm not at liberty to discuss names. Let's just say someone close to the victim and a rival round out my list. Thanks for the tip, detective. Hey, O'Malley, you may be a private eye now, but you're an ex-cop, so don't cross the police. Well, the suspects seem to be adding up. The dame, the maid, thug, and a crime boss. If I'm going to get to the bottom of this, I'm going to need to talk to an old friend. Jack Donovan, once my partner, now a detective with a dubious reputation, is heading up the case. Our history is complicated, filled with camaraderie and betrayal. Does Donovan have a personal vendetta against Marlowe? Or is there more to his involvement? The rain poured down in sheets, pounding against the pavement like a thousand fists. He pulled his coat tight, trying to fend off the chill that seeped through his bones. It was a night like any other in this godforsaken city. A night when the shadows seemed to stretch a little longer and the darkness seemed to hold a little tire. I was on my way to see an old informant, Mickey Schmidt. Mickey was a small time hood from Chicago who decided it was easier to make money off information than petty crime. I found Mickey working at a bowling alley outside the edge of town. Oh, Molly. 
Why are you coming around my place of business? Mickey, it's a bowling alley, not a street corner. I need some info, and I know you always need some money. You know, I did hear you were looking for information on the Tony Marlowe case. That's right. I'm trying to piece together what happened the night he was killed. Any leads would be appreciated. I don't know much, but I heard some names floating around. There's Tesla Fluffy Bond, Joe Johnston, Levy the Milo, and Bumfrey Hogarth. What do you know about these people? Not much, just that they were all in the area around the time of the murder. I heard some rumors about Fluffy Bottom and Hogarth having some kind of beef with Marlo, but I can't say for sure. What about Joe Johnson? I got nothing on Joe Johnston. Mickey, you know it's easier and less painful if you just tell me. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No violence is necessary! Joe had a meeting with Tony. Tony was trying to take a bite out of Joe's business. Last thing, Mickey. Did you hear anything about Levita Marlowe? I hear the cops think she was trying to bring in an outside hit. The rumor came from inside the Marlowe crew. Thanks for the 50 bucks. I gotta go. Hey, no smoking back there, you kids. Joe Johnson, Marlowe's arch nemesis in the underworld, had every reason to want Tony dead. Their rivalry was legendary, and a power vacuum would benefit Johnson greatly. Did he orchestrate the murder, or is he being framed? Bumfrey Hogart, the muscle behind Tony's operation, is as tough as they come. He was fiercely loyal to Tony, but power plays and internal conflicts might have pushed him to betray his boss. Was it ambition or self-preservation? Tesla Fluffy Bottom, the maid with the name that belies her tough exterior. She was the one who discovered the body. Her knowledge of household secrets make her a valuable witness and a suspect. Is she hiding something? Guess the easiest way is to start at the top. Mrs. Marlowe said Tesla Fluffy Bottom was the first one on the scene. Marlowe Residence. Is this Miss Fluffy Bottom? Yes, this is Tesla Fluffy Bottom. My name is Peter O'Malley. I'm investigating what happened to Mr. Marlowe. Well, I've already told Detective Donovan everything I know. I appreciate that. And while this is a difficult time, I'm not working with the police. I'm working for Mrs. Marlowe. Would it be possible to meet with you? Uh, of course, sir. I look forward to meeting with you. How is Mrs. Marlowe? Well, she is understandably upset. I think she was holding it together pretty well. Would you be available to meet in about an hour? Uh, yes, sir. See you soon. Hello, Mr. O'Malley. You'll forgive me if I'm still a bit distracted. The thing about death, Miss Fluffybottom, 
so it often shows up uninvited, like a bad penny or a door-to-door -door salesman. But in this case, it seemed to come with an RSVP. You were the one that found the stiff. I mean, you were the one that found Mr. Marlowe. Is that correct? I... I didn't mean to, Mr. O'Malley. Honest. I just came in to clean up the study, and there he was. Dead. Colder than a banker's heart. Colder than a banker's heart. Huh. That's poetic. But let's cut the jazz, sweetheart. A guy like Tony Marlowe doesn't wind up dead without a bunch of sharks swimming around beforehand. And from where I'm standing, you might be one of them. Me? What could I possibly want with Mr. Marlowe's death? I'm just the maid. I clean up messes. I don't make them. Everyone's got a motive, doll. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's love. Sometimes it's just a dirty job you didn't sign up for. You and Bumphrey Hogart seem awful close for just a maid and a bodyguard. Maybe too close. Care to explain that? Bumphrey's... He's a good man. He looks out for me, that's all. We've both seen the worst of this world, Mr. O'Malley. Sometimes, you cling to the nearest lifeboat, even if it's leaking. Funny thing about leaky lifeboats, they have a way of sinking and dragging everyone down with them. So, here's the million dollar question. Were you and Bumphrey just holding on for dear life? Or were you planning to shove Marlo overboard? Me? I didn't kill him. I couldn't... I swear, Bumphrey might have had his reasons, but he is not a murderer, and neither am I. Maybe not, Miss Fluffybottom. But you've got secrets, and secrets have a way of catching up with you, especially when they involve men like Bumphrey Hogart and dead bosses like Marlo. You're in deep. The only question is, how far will you go to get yourself out? I'm telling you the truth, Mr. O'Malley. I didn't want any of this. I just wanted to get by, like anyone else. Getting by is a dangerous game in this town, honey. One wrong move, and you're the one in the mess. And there's no one left to clean up after you. Just keep that in mind. Feeling a little empty after pushing the dame around. Joe Johnson. We have history. I know where he lives. I know the people that work for him. I think it's time we go by and pay him a little visit. been a while, Joe. Last time we met, you were trying to talk your way out of a 20-year stretch. Looks like you managed to do more than just talk. O'Malley, you old dog. Still poking your nose in places that might get you bit, I see. Yeah, I walked away from that one. A little persuasion goes a long way in this town. You know that better than anyone. Persuasion, bribery, a well-timed alibi. Call it what you want. But this time, Joe, I'm not here to reminisce about old times. I'm here because Tony Marlowe got a bullet in him, and you've got more than a few reasons to have put it there. Tony Marlowe was a lot of things. A thief, a thug, and a double-crossing son of a bitch. So let's not pretend he was a saint. The world's better off without him, but that doesn't mean I pulled the trigger. You had a meeting with him that day, Joe. Word on the street is it got heated. Something about territory or a deal gone sour. Either way, it's got your fingerprints all over it. A meeting? Sure. We had words. And plenty of them. Tony and I were always at each other's throats. But that's the business we're in. It doesn't mean I'd waste a bullet on him. Besides, I prefer to do my business in greenbacks, not lead. Greenbacks can buy you a lot of things, Joe. 
but they can't buy you out of a murder rap. You had the motive, the opportunity, and let's not forget that little score you've been itching to settle since Tony took a bite out of your operation last year. You think I'd be stupid enough to do it myself, O'Malley? That's the kind of mistake an amateur makes. I didn't get where I am by being sloppy. If I wanted Tony gone, I'd have dozens of alibis lined up and someone else to pull the trigger. But you know that, don't you? You're here because you think I had something to do with it, but you can't prove a damn thing. You're right, Joe. I don't have proof. Not yet. But I've got something just as good. An old cop's instinct and a feeling that this time, your luck is about to run out. You see, you can buy a lot of things in this town, but you can't buy your way out of the truth. Let me give you a piece of advice, O'Malley. Walk away from this. You're not a cop anymore. And the only thing you're going to find digging up this mess is trouble. Big trouble. You've had your run-ins with the likes of me. But this is different. You're out of your depth. Trouble's all I got left, Joe. And I don't mind wading into the deep water, even if it means swimming with sharks. You can bet I'll keep digging, and sooner or later, I'll find the bones you've buried.